Okay, now the, the, the loop also has this uh, squirrely bracket. I'm going to go down with this. Okay, inside this loop, okay, once you add more and more uh, traces, what you want to do with it? Okay, now, the next thing is to tell where you want the traces to be. Do you want it to be down here, up here, uh, anywhere? Okay, and that's what the next part is. Okay, which is the integer. I want it to be a whole number because I don't want traces to be a fraction or decimal. Okay, now let's start with the uh, let's say the y axis right here. Okay, since I want to be lining up either down here, up here, along the y axis, so I'm going to start with the y because look at here, see how I start with y. Like Okay, again, I'm going to do dollar sign y index. The index meaning any any time when I see the word index, I ask myself where does it start? Does it start down here in the middle, up here, where? Okay, that's what the word index means. Equal. Again, I do the. This time it's the y resolution because based on the resolution of the con the range right here, the resolution is the range. Okay, so based on the resolution of the y res, which is right here, uh, let me go back, select this object, which is the y right here, okay, y res, and I want to multiply that by the number of item, and then plus 0 0.5. What 0 0.5 means Let's say I have two traces, okay, instead of, instead of starting all the way down here or up here, I want them to be equally divided in the middle. Again, I will change this number so you can see what I mean later on. Once I type in the command and then like that, and that's what the 0.5 means, okay. Now I take that and divide by the number of traces, okay, now, but however, I want this one Mult not just to multiply by this by this number right here, but I want it to multiply by the whole thing, which is all the way over here. So therefore, I need another parentheses, and all the way over here like that. Since I want this y rest to multiply by both of these like that, and that's why I have to include the final parentheses. Okay. Again, when you want to end it, you always have to do semicolon. The next thing is. Okay, now that I, I told where the fluid to start, either down here, middle, up here. Next thing is, do I want to be over here, in the middle, or over here? Now it's the z-axis. I have to tell the range of the z-axis. Again, I don't want the traces to be a whole number or fraction. I have to use whole, uh, sorry, decimal whole number. So that's why I use integer. Again, this time it's not going to be y-axis. It's going to be the z-axis. So, z-index. Remember I said that index meaning where do I want to start? Over here, in the middle, over there. So next is I'm going to have the Z resolution because I want to be along this range right here. Multiply by the number of item plus put it in the middle because I don't want to start all the way on the edge or on this edge. I want in the middle. 0.5 divide by the number of traces and again I want this whole z rest to multiply by both of these numbers both of these okay so I'm gonna have to enclose it in a parentheses and I want to end up with semicolon and there's one more step next is you have to tell the density we are told where the velocity starts but we haven't told where the density of the smoke to start. Do you want to be over here in the middle or where? That's why the next step is to, again, we have to go set fluid adder. That means where you want to start. The next thing is to um, give an attribute. That's why you see the minus AT attribute of what? This time it's not the velocity, but we want it to be the density. Okay. And let's. And I want the, uh, the density start, since I want the fluid to flow along the x-axis, okay, I want the fluid to start all the way over here, 
not in the middle, not all the way at the end. I want to start all the way on this edge, okay? So that's why I'm going to do minus xi, meaning i means index. The, every time I hear the word index, where do I want to start? Index, I want to start at 0, meaning all the way over here. And the next one is minus y. Along the y-axis, where do I want to start? Okay, do I want to be down here, in the middle, up here? Well, since I want to be based on the resolution of the y-axis, like that, the resolution of the y-axis, so therefore I'm going to do is, I'm going to do dollar sign y index, because right here, you can see that that's the one, okay? It takes the number of traces, divide them equally, and put them along the y-axis, and that's what this command means. Oops, make sure you don't hide, um, you could actually move it. The okay, next one is the, the Z index. Z index. Now, let me go back and put it right here. Again, do I want to start over here in the middle, over here? Let's say I want to be start in the middle. That's very simple to do. Right now, if I I know that if I set the fluid, my resolution in the Z axis is 30. Okay, if I want to start in the middle. That will be 15, right? Because 30, 15 is half of 30. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it name a uh, number 15, and then last would be I have to give a uh, attribute for the fluid velocity. Okay, actually this F does not mean fluid. It means the float of what of the veloc uh, velocity. I'm sorry, float value. Sorry. FV means the float value. First of all, float means a decimal number. Value means could be any number. Okay, any number of what? Since I want to talk about the density because I always show the velocity. Now I don't want the velocity. I want the density. So again, I want this one right here. I want to tell because all these numbers doesn't mean anything unless you tell what what they belong to. So they belong to the density. The density of what? Of the my fluid contains, so that's why it's fluid shape one. And then you end up with a semicolon. So now if you type in exactly this, I'm gonna pause a little bit. Or you can take a print print screen image and hit create. Once you're done, I'm gonna hit create. And you should have no errors if you type in the command correctly. Okay. Now make sure that if you if you name it your fluid something different, make sure you change right here. Okay, but in this case I can change it differently, so that's why I um I keep the name of fluid shape one. Okay, so now let me minimize this. What I'm going to do is five thousand. I'm gonna go over here. Click on the preferences. I'm going to go time slider and choose real time. Most of the time when you do dynamics, it's always a uh, frame, play by frame, but that's going to be very fast, so I'm going to choose this one. And now if I hit rewind and play, you should get that. Okay. And you press 6 on your keyboard, it, that's what it looks like. And like I said, make sure that you select the fluid, go down to content de details and density, make sure it's 1. And buoyancy equals to zero. If the buoyancy is a positive number, it will rise up. If it's a negative number, it will rise down, fall down. Okay, so make sure it's zero. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here. Where is it shaking? Okay, so if I rewind and play, if I increase this one, it's become more transparent. If I bring it closer to here, see near this mark right here, it become more apparent. So again, I want this second one, the color, to be the speed, not the, not constant. For example, if let's say I select this one, and I change it to let's say a blue color. So now, um, let's say I throw in an object. Let me import my car. You can import any object you want. Oh, you know what? I'm going to select the uh, let's create a sphere, polygon sphere. Move up. 
and I don't need to delete the history I'm going to select the object shift select the fluid and, and make sure you're in the dynamics mode go fluid go effects make collide so now if I rewind it and play see how it, it, it collided with it now let me explain what the car means select the fluid anything on the left side is going to be the slow speed anything on the right side is going to be the fast speed so right now I see that the fast speed is right here because right here there's a little drag that's why you see the slow speed another thing is what you can do is the input bias you can move the slider to show more of the slow speed if you want or show only more of the high speed like that. so that's what the input bias means okay okay next would be if you scroll down here keep everything the same and uh, you can change your density if you want to let's say if I did that again this is at the beginning this is at the end for example let's say if at the beginning I want to be very see how at the beginning the smoke trail becomes so um, so thin yeah. if let's say at the beginning I want the smoke trail to be much thicker yeah. and at the end let's say much I want it to thin out And also how it cuts off right here. So best thing is play around and that's how you can learn it. Let me move this one down and move this one back up. Okay, next one, let me scroll down. Be because you type in some command, it's down here, extra attribute. So right here the tracers. I can have say six tracers right there I can reduce the speed to go low slow or I can increase speed much more like that and again remember how I changed right here to uh, 50 it's over here when I ch when I add the attribute I told it to go maximum to 50 which is right here modify add an attribute and when it, when it said keyable, I told it to um, to make it to be 50, okay? Yeah, I think that's about it. So let me review the uh, mouse scripting. So here's the uh, the whole command. So take a snapshot of your of print screen so that you can see what it is. And, uh, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to change the, um, the mouse scripting to, to make the smoke instead of vertically. It's going to be horizontally, okay? And thank you for watching.